Welcome back to Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this class, I'll be teaching you how to make this beautiful mermaid gown with train and it has less edges with perfect inseam finishing, no seam at all. Okay, so I'll be showing you or teaching you the tips and tricks to making this beautiful mermaid skirt as you can see right here. So if this is what you want to learn in this class, I will encourage you to stay till the end of this tutorial to learn how to make this skirt perfectly. Thank you for joining Simbright Fashion Academy YouTube channel. So stay tuned. So right now we want to start off this tutorial. So I'm actually making a mermaid skirt. So this mermaid skirt, I'll be using my dolphin satin fabric to serve as interlining. I have my lace. And I'll also use my lining also. So I'll be using this uh, NJ uh, lining. Or you can use any lining of your choice. But this is the lining I'm going to use and my interlining. So first we are going to draft the front and back skirt. We are drafting it on the lining. So to make this man-made skirt, you need just um, three yards okay because it's going to have a little train at the back so i have my three yards of fabric and here i'm going to fold the first one so to fold the first one which is the front piece of this dress i'll just go ahead and fold the first one so don't face satin fabric comes at the length of 60 um inches so but from that 60 inches i'm going to cut out the length of this skirt so the length of this skirt is actually 42 okay but then i'm going to measure beyond that 42 because it's going to be on the floor line this is what i cut out from my main fabric so like i said for this mermaid um, uh, skirt you need three yards or even three and a half depending on how much you want your um your fabric okay and uh, how you want the length of the tail to be so here i've cut out 20 21 inches on fold okay so your fabric has to be on foot at 21 inches because we are going to have expansions on the side so once you have done that the next we want to do is to create the border line so i just step down by one inch and create my starting point or my skirt waist so once i've done that i'm going to place my tape on the waist and measure my hip so i'm working with hip nine inches height i'll add half an inch to it nine inches half an inch okay then i will go ahead and take the measurement of my my knee line so my knee is 22 i'll count one two three four inches so this four inches i have it at 18 so i'll come down by 18 and a half because I've added my stitching allowance. Then I'm going to take the length of the, the skirt. So like I earlier said, the length of this skirt falls at 42. So this is 42. So I'll add half an inch for the length of the skirt. And since it's a mermaid gown, so it needs to flow. So I'm going to add from that half an inch, I'll add one, two, three, four. So I have it at 46 and half. That is the length, total length, okay? So in case you are wearing a heel and all that, that is where the measurement is going to be. So for this uh, skirt, I'm making an English waist for this mermaid skirt. I'm not using my elastic band, okay? So I'll just go ahead and make an English waist for it. So now I'm working with waist uh, round hip 42. So my round hip measurement for this dress is 42. 42 inches. That is my round hip measurement. So when working with less um, 
fabric i always like to add plus one to my hip measurements okay because i'm working with this so now my my round hip is 43 so that is what we are working with so now i'm going to divide this 43 for back and for front the front is usually smaller and back is bigger because of the boots allowance so here 43 i'm going to give this 22 and i'll give this 21 so the remaining one inch um we'll be using it at the boot space okay so 21 plus 22 will fall back to 23 so the first the front i'm going to use 21 um, i'm sorry back is 22 front is 21 front is smaller that's what i always i want to say so this 22 now so the whole of my front is 20 21 so that 21 uh, this is my hip my hip uh, measurement so my actual hip measurement i'll first come up from there for the upper hip and i'll mark two inches above it so whatever your hip is mark two inches above it so i'll just create that line now i'm going to first impute on my waist i'm going to impute my waist circumference divided by four so my waist circumference is uh, 40 divided by four is 10 so I'm, i'll just go ahead and mark my 10 inches so if you mark your 10 inches add your seam allowance i'll work with one and half i'll add one and half at once i'll come to the upper hip we are working with 22 for the front 21 for the front. 21, I'm, I will divide it by 2. So 21, when divided by 2, will give me, if this is 21 for the front, I'm going to divide that 21 by 2. So if I divide, I'll have 10 and half. So I'll go ahead and mark my 10 and half on the upper hip. Mark my 10 and half on the lower hip okay so once i mark them i'll add my one and a half inch for seam allowance one and a half for seam allowance so here i've marked my one and a half i'm going to connect it this way so then i'll come in with my hip curve place my hip curve on that one and a half to the one and a half I have for the uh, hip to the waistline okay so once I've connected hip to the waistline the next I will do is to come over to my knee line so for my knee line note that we are actually working with we are going to use our actual hip measurements before I added one inch my hip is 42 42 divided by 4, that is how to get your knee line. You have 10.5. This 10.5 simply minus 1.5 from it. So if I minus 1.5 from 10.5, I'll have 9 inches. So that is what I'm going to measure for all my knee line. So I'll come to the knee position. I'll place 9 inches. 9 inches i'll add one and a half which is my seam allowance then i'll come in with my hip curve i'll come over here and place this on the hip this way so from that point i'll take it to this point can you see so that is it for the skirt now i'll come over to the uh, to the what I have on the hem so I'm going to transfer this what I have here nine inches plus one and a half for seam allowance will give me ten and a half so I'll go to come to the hem the part where we have um, the floor level I'll mark the ten and a half then I'm going to add my extension for the mermaid uh, skirt so I'm adding eight inches so you can even add, it depends on how you want to add. You can even do six inches. Okay, let me just do six inches. I don't want, actually want this to be 
too much so let me do six inches from that point so six inches from this point i'll direct my ruler to that six inches so if you have a, a long ruler that would be nice so i'll just direct it can you see so once i've done that i'll come you can see what we have right here so from here we'll be entering the knee so at this point i'm going to come up by one or uh, one inch so if i come up by one inch to avoid that part being pointy i'll blend it up this way okay so i'm sure that my front right right now is ready so next is to cut out my front pattern so i have all my seam allowances so you can still cross check your seam allowances so in cutting out i'll just add half an inch i'm adding half an inch on top for the seam allowance for the skirts then i'll come by the side and i'm going to cut I'll cut it to that line I marked. Okay, so this is what our skirt looks like for the front. So you can go ahead and make your notch. So I will use this to cut the back now. Now we want to cut out the back uh, skirt. So I've placed my back skirt um, on fold, but the measurement of the width I used here because it's going to have a, a tail at the back is 30 inches so it depends on your size anyway so for this um uh, hip 42 i'm using 30 inches you can make it smaller 25 you can even make it make it bigger 35 if you are on a big size so once that is done i'll come in with my skirt and i'm going to position the skirt this way i'll keep it on a straight line Okay, so this center front area, that is where I'm going to have the back train. So I'll just push it to this point. Okay, so you can see where I pushed it. So I'm going to secure with my pin. So once you have placed the front on the back, make sure that the center front, center back area has at least six inches extension. Okay at least six inches extension or eight inches extension so i even have more than here i have up to 12 inches so you can fold your fabric at 25 instead of 30 inches okay so you don't waste your fabric so now this is the hip position at the lower hip which is the actual hip i measured i'm going to extend my lines so here i'm going to add the boots allowance so note that we divided from our calculation i added plus one if you remember i added plus one to my hip and i have 23 as is so this 43 i shared back 22 front 21 so i'm going to add my boot allowance right now so that's boot allowance i'll come in by 0.7 so I'll come in from here. My butt allowance is 0 0.75 and I'll mark that 0 0.75. So once I've done that, I'm going to connect that butt allowance from here. I'll take it to here, which is the hip line. So I just position it this way and mark out the hip line. So now I'm going to measure from that uh, waistline 13 inches. That is if you are on a normal size. If you're on a plus size, you can measure to that point at 18, uh, 15 inches. So I'll just go ahead and connect that line. I'll place my pattern ruler and connect it back 
to this line can you see so i'll take it back to this line then i'll take it straight from there to where i have my hip all right so once that is done the next thing i'll do is to go over to the hem of the basket so this is the hem of the basket and i'm going to make an extension of the hem of my basket by eight inches so i'll add eight inches so that eight inches i'm going to narrow it from there to meet with what i have on the knee so it will be nice to, uh, better to use a longer ruler for this so i'll just narrow it that way okay so all right so now after doing that i'll come up i'm going to add my seam allowance my one inch seam allowance is for my zipper so note that this point is the point of my zipper so i'm adding one one inch zip allowance is one inch i'll just keep marking one one inch like that so i will create it now so now i've connected my boots allowance so i measured one inch on the 13 inches where i stopped and measure one inch all around up to the hem part so now i'll just go ahead and come up i'll come up from here by one inch remember we did it at the other part so so it's i actually want this to just flow normally i don't want it to have any train so since i want it to flow normally i could have just extended a little okay but if you still want to do that what it means is that you can just extend a little from the main line i can extend this point that is the center back area i'm extending it by three inches so if i extend it by three inches this is what i will do i'll now connect that line to the three inches extension and from that three inches i'm going to connect this i'll use my ruler this way and connect it you can see how i'm connecting it to meet the other side so i'll just do this Can you see that? So I'll just connect it to meet this side this way. That's if you want to have an extension, a little uh, train or extension. So this is how we are going to connect it. So this three inches is the little train I added to the man made skirt. So I'll go ahead and cut. So I will cut the back. This is my one inch allowance. So I will just cut it. So you have to be careful while cutting. So you can see the boot allowance. I'll take it all the way. take it all the way to the train extension can you see so you have to make it to meet up with what we so now i'm done cutting the uh, the lace the lining and the uh, the interfacing so i'll quickly go ahead and you can see how i laid this part you know that you know that this part was curvy so i placed my lace uh, salvage following that curvy part as well so later i'm going to trim out 
the cuffs of this lace okay so i've also cut for the front as well so this is the front so i will let that trim off the salvage i'll just use my scissors and take my time to remove the nets so i'll take my time to remove the nets so i'll do that all over to the end before i place this on the satin fabric all right so i cut it exactly at the point of the um of my doll face fabric so i'll go ahead to um when i'm working with my lace i usually like to use my gum to hold down so i'm separating the lining so i'm going to place my i'm going to place my lace on top so you can stitch you can place your gum okay so but for laces i like to use my gum So I'll make sure I arrange it. Then I'll bring come in with my blue gum. So I'll just place, arrange and place. I'll just lift up and just drop at the edges just to hold it. Okay, so I'll do that all around. Then we'll start the stitching okay. so now i'm done placing my lace like i said i used my uhu gum and dropped at the edges and placed the lace okay so what i have here is one piece of the back one piece of the back you can see the boot allowance cutting so this piece of the back i'm going to bring the other piece of it which i placed my lace on top too so i placed the lace with my uhu gum too so now i'm going to do what put them together zipper to zipper this is where we are going to have our zipper allowance so i just match it up together as you can see so once i've done that i will place my um, i'm going to place my zip this is my zip so I'll just place it exactly at the edge and take the measurement. So I'm going to mark out on the point I have um, this iron piece. So I'll mark it out right here. So I'll go back to the machine. I'm going to sew one one inch, one one inch, one one inch till I get to the end. Give it a good press and attach my zipper. Let me do that you can see i've attached the zipper and i've also joined this to the hem okay give it a good press make sure you make your notches on the center on the mid line that's on the mid line so after that i'll turn it to the right and to the right side and i'll bring in the front piece so this front piece, I'm going to position it. You know I have my notch, so that notch I'll place it right there. And then I'm going to align it appropriately. So I'm going to sew off my seam allowance, which I added. I'll just go ahead and sew it to the end. I'll also do the same to the end. So let I'm done sewing the lining. So you can see the lining, I joined everything as if it's a full skirt. And the way it is right here as lining, it has the same length with the fabric. So this is how I join the fabric. So the fabric, I have both the interfacing and the lace in it. So like I earlier said, we want to achieve a perfect inseam finishing and we still have our lace edges. Okay. So to achieve that, what I have here is the same length with this lining so i want you to pay attention so you understand what i'm going to or what i'm about 
to do right here on this mermaid's skirt. So now, if you look, so now if you look at the this uh, seam line, you can see I did not finish it to the lace edge. I left about two inches. Okay, from that point, I left two inches. So at that two inches, this is what I'm going to do to achieve my lace edge and also achieve my uh, perfect inseam finishing. So you can see I stopped at two inches. So I'm going to turn this to the this way. So I just want you to watch what I'm going to do. We are going to sew doll face. We are sewing these two lace first and we'll sew this one. We'll bring push it in and sew this. So to achieve that, you first of all make a notch. So here where my stitches stop are two inches. You can see I'll push it and make a notch so i'll make a notch that gets to that point can you see to that stitching line i'll go over to my machine with this notch i will stitch i will push it in this is what i'm going to do in my machine now i'll push the part i stitched in then i will go ahead place it on top can you see Place it on top and do what? And close up. That is what I'm going to do to all of them. So after sewing, this is what I have. Can you see? So what you can now do is to trim or reduce the less edge. So I'll just go ahead and just reduce all, all the edges. Okay? Then you can also search this part. So I'm going to reduce the lining. You can see I have all of them shifted and sewn that way so i'm going to reduce my lining right now so here is my lining since they are of the same length with the with the uh, door face i'll just put my lining together this way very carefully and i'm going to reduce it i'm reducing my lining by two and a half inches so if I reduce it by two and a half inches, then when I fold, I'll be having one inch at the edge. So just go ahead and reduce the lining. From this edge, I'll place my tape. I'll keep going two and a half like that. So let me quick. So I've reduced it equally. After reducing the lining, I'll come back with my men's skirt now. I'll open so I'll open up the zipper as you can see here then I'm turning it to the wrong side the lining at the wrong side so I will insert this lining inside the skirt after opening the zipper and the parts I open for the zip on the lining you can see I made a crease line to it I'll pick it up at that point and match it to the zipper align the crease line okay this way can you see so once i have done that i will hold it this way okay and then i'll follow these stitches with my zipper foot and i'm going to sew round so i'm done sewing the zipper this is what you will have when you finish sewing the zipper so now i will i still have this part separate okay i'm going to let her stitch that part but we want to finish up what we have on the uh, um, on the hemline. So this is the part we separated when we stitched. So this is the lining that we reduced. So I'll just turn this this way. Can you see? I'm going to turn it this way. So I'm going to sew the way I turned it. You can secure with your pin, but you can just start up the sewing. But make sure. You match up all seam lines so I'll just go ahead the way I turned it right side to right I will sew till I come back here so I'm done sewing and I even top stitched okay I flipped all the lining on the part of the um, of the lining that's all, all the seams on the part of the lining and top stitch so I'm going to bring it out from the waistline so 
so from the waistline you can bring it out since the waistline is still open we have not uh, stitch it so when I bring it out this is what we'll be having although I will go over to give it a good press okay so here I will go and give it a good press I'm going to arrange the lining and the fabric so once I iron it and arrange it I'll be having something like this after ironing so we you see we still have a neat finishing at the end of the day and we still have our less edge so I'll quickly iron it now before I iron it I first of all sew the lining and the fabric together so it's going to be easy for me to iron out this part so now that I've sewn them together so when I'm ironing now I'll just go ahead and stretch it like this and I'm sure that I'm going to iron at the right length so once I finish ironing this is what I'm going to have now so let me so now I've given it a good press and this is what we have now you see so when you look inside here you can see we have a neat finishing here we also have our lace edge on it soon okay then you can see the part i told you to separate so you'll be able to have this lace edge so we still have the same at the back as well we still have our lace edges and a neat finishing so now the next thing we want to do is to shape in the tummy drop so i'll put the seam lines together and i'm going to secure with my pin at this point so once i've secured with my pin right now the next thing i'm going to do this is the center front area you can still see my notch and this is the center back where we have the zipper so i'll just go ahead and make my mark i'm going to mark from the center front i'll come down for my tummy drop by one inch so i'll mark the one inch as you can see so once i've marked the one inch i'll come in with my hip curve like this and then i'm going to connect it to the center uh, the side can you see so that is the tummy drop so I choose to do that at the end of my sewing. So I'll just go ahead and cut out the one inch tummy drop. Can you see? I'll just trim it out. Then once I've trimmed it out, this is what it looks like. So it drops. Can you see? It drops. So now I'm going to take, of course, my the measurement of what I have here. You can also go ahead and take it again so you just go round it to know how many inches that you ha have on your skirt waist so how many inches we have on our skirt waist that is what I'm taking so I'm going to take that measurement from there to here so here I have 39 inches so on my strip, the width of the strip I'm using to pipe it is one and a half, and the length is 40 inches. So I added 40 inches to it. Okay, you can see it's 40 inches. So we'll go back to the, we'll use one inch to, uh, to pipe the two ends. Then it returns back to the 39 inches. So let's go to the machine to pipe. So to pipe you need to open up your zip, that is the first thing, then this is what I have, so I will fold in 0 0.5 inch on one end, so I will place right side to wrong side, this way. So I will start from this, and I'm going to sew 0 
Okay, I'll keep sewing 0 0.5. Once I get to the end, I'll fold in what I have. So here I have a little excess, just a little excess. I'll trim it off. I just need half an inch right here. So I'll just back stitch. So after back stitching, I'll now come back again from where I started or from the point I ended I will go ahead and do what and fold in half an inch and fold it in again can you see so I just fold it in this way so that is how to go about the piping So when you are doing this, make sure you do that neatly, okay? So I'm just trying to cover it neatly because this is um, less I'm working with. So I just want to do that gently and neatly till I get to the end, okay? So I'll be top stitching like that. So you can see what I have right here. So that is how I'm going to type it. So I'll do that till I get to the end. So this is what the piping looks like. So I will just go ahead and give it a good press. So that is how we come to the end of this tutorial. And I believe this class was helpful to you. So if you are new to this channel, please kindly subscribe. Turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day. Like this video, share to family and friends. Drop your comment on the comment section and your suggestions as well. Thank you once again. See you in the next class. Bye.